Hi, Phil Waters from Hendrix Therapy, and today we're going to talk about ADHD tidbits because you can never get enough about ADHD. So here's some tidbits about ADHD. First, I get asked this question quite a bit by people. It's like, well, what's the difference between speed and this medication? And I tell them, you know what? There's not a whole lot of molecular difference. If you look at the molecule of amphetamine and you look at the molecule of methamphetamine, the only difference is a methyl group. Now, methyl group is a carbon atom with three hydrogen atoms. Now, that's not a whole big big difference molecularly, but it's a whole lot of difference as far as how those molecules work. Um, when you add a methyl group to an amphetamine, what it does, it makes it cross the blood-brain barrier. Now, the blood-brain barrier is this barrier between your blood and your brain that will only let certain molecules in um, in order to protect your brain. And when you add the methyl group to the amphetamine, it gets through it really fast. And anything that gets through the blood-brain barrier really fast, especially if it is a drug of abuse, um, it can hammer home real easily. And when people use um, or misuse medications or, or, or use um, methamphetamine or other um, stimulants in that regard, they tend to use high doses. So they're using high doses of a drug that also hits the brain very, very quickly. Um, I had a patient the other day tell me that his definition of ADHD, he had obviously have ADHD, was just a low boredom tolerance that he has trouble focusing on things that aren't real stimulating. Um, I thought that was kind of a nice way to put ADHD. You look at the video, take your pills. We kind of evaluated that last time. They kind of insinuated that, you know, ADHD is probably overdiagnosed and overtreated was how part of what I felt the video expressed. And this recent study that came out showed that in the United States, yeah, that, you know, the rate of treatment's gone up significantly, like I think it was 46% between like 2004, 2014, 46% is a pretty big increase. But if you look at the treatment in the United States compared to the rest of the world, it's actually pretty comparable. You know, I, 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 I was a little bit taken aback by that. I, I assume that we are treating it much more aggressively than the rest of the world. But I think if you look at the average, uh, the data from the averages, um, we're not that much different, which then kind of confirms what we knew before, that it's a neurodevelopmental problem. It's not a problem of parenting. It's not a problem of a bad kid. It's a problem of a person who has a brain that's developed differently than others. Um, another interesting tidbit um, in psychiatry, it's always being kind of cliche to blame the mother. Now we know that ADHD is quite genetic and in one instance we can kind of blame the mother a little bit because if the mother smokes the chance of her child having ADHD goes up twofold. Twofold is a pretty big increase. And then they looked at those same mothers who didn't smoke but they took a nicotine replacement like vape or maybe they had a patch and intuitively you'd think that the rate of ADHD of their offspring would would decrease and it really didn't it stayed about the same so the thought is it's the nicotine in the cigarette that somehow affects the fetus to ultimately be at greater risk for developing ADHD now it's also interesting that nicotine is a stimulant um, so you wonder if there's just some type of interplay developmentally um, between the fetus and nicotine because it certainly looks like it. Um, people with untreated ADHD, their IQ is about 10 points lower than it would be if they're treated. 10 points is massive. If somebody would give me 10 points of IQ, I would be really, really, really pumped about it. Um, you look at people with substance abuse and ADHD. Now, I can't remember the exact figures, but people with substance abuse had a really high rate of ADHD. It's like maybe 20, 30 percent of those in certain settings that had substance um, abuse. And it's also interesting that they changed 
the wording. We used to call it like alcohol dependence um, or substance dependence. Um, and now we, we, we call it substance misuse disorders instead of substance dependence disorders. Um, and just the way you word that tends to have people, people tend to look at the illness differently, tend to look at the person in a more favorable light if you use the word substance misuse. Um, but back to where we were, um, again, people with ADHD tend to have a really significant risk for substance abuse. And if you treat them, their risk goes down about 250% you know, in, in certain populations over a certain period of time. Now, 250% is a massive, massive number. Um, comparatively speaking, if you look at someone who has high cholesterol and they take a statin medication to lower their cholesterol, it will decrease their risk of um, having a heart attack by 24%. Now, 24%, now it's pretty big. Compared to 250, though, wow, 250 seems even more impressive. So just a few tidbits on ADHD. Um, the earlier you treat it, the better the person tends to do in life. I remember in grade school, you know, this was way back, way back when, you know, there's a couple of kids in our class who were always getting in trouble. They did poorly. Um, the teacher would draw a circle with the chalk on the chalkboard and the kid had to put their nose in it for the whole period. And you wonder how much better their life would have been today if they were treated for their ADHD instead of basically punished for it. So hope this was interesting for you and I'll talk to you another day. Thanks.